report says the number of people worldwide becoming infected with HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, has dropped by 21% since the global epidemic peaked in 1997. Those new infections have plateaued at about 2.7 million cases per year. The report says 34 million people worldwide are living with HIV due to improved access to drug treatment. Michelle Sidibe, Executive Director of the Joint United Nations Program on HIV AIDS, says 2011 has been a milestone year in the global fight against AIDS. You know, for us, um, this year it is a, a game changing year. It's uh, the first time that the science was telling us that uh, if we put people on treatment early, we can reduce uh, the new infection by 96%. Timely drug therapies have slowed the pace of HIV deaths and new infections and helped avert an estimated 700,000 AIDS-related deaths. But there are still major challenges ahead, according to Dr. Anthony Fauci. He is director of the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and one of the pioneers in the fight to stop the AIDS epidemic. The more people that you get on therapy, the earlier you diagnose them, the less deaths you will see. That's good news. The sobering news is that we still have a long way to go. We still do not have the epidemic under control. The UN data shows that in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, more than a million people are still dying of the disease every year. In these HIV hot zones, experts agree that early intervention with antiretroviral drugs can save lives and slow transmission rates. But Dr. Fauci says pairing this treatment with proven prevention strategies is key to getting the epidemic under control. I have always control. the fact that when you put treatment, put people on treatment, get their viral load to a level that's low enough, it is extremely unlikely that those people will transmit the infection to their uninfected sexual partner. So if you combine all of the prevention modalities and superimpose upon that treatment of more and more people, then you could start to see some significant downturn in the pandemic. Funding is also essential to continue research on an HIV vaccine and other prevention and treatment efforts. But humanitarian organizations report that donor support has dropped for the first time, from $7.6 billion in 2009 to $6.9 billion in 2010. Sidibe says UN member countries have promised to fill the gap and is hopeful they will. I think uh, this report is uh, just uh, telling us that uh, it is not time to pull out. It is time to invest on the aid because results are there. The UN aid director says those investments can turn the tide and mark the beginning of the end of the aid pandemic. Vidushi Sinha, VOA News, Washington. Washington, D.C. Yeah,那我們進階了。This is the VOA Special English Education, English Education Report. Each year, about 250,000 Americans study in other countries. Some study abroad programs are trying harder to get students to learn about the local culture. 
One student, on his first morning in Beijing, was brought to a distant part of the city. He received money and instructions how to get back. It took some time, but he succeeded. Professor William Finley says challenges like this help students experience another culture. He heads the sociology department at the University of Georgia in the United States. He says it's absolutely crucial that they know something about how people in other parts of the world live and think and how they behave. Often, those students go in large groups, and they hang around with each other. We felt that they really weren't getting to know the local inhabitants. In 2008, Professor Finley started a program with South Africa's Stellenbosch University. The program combines traditional classroom learning with community involvement through a non-governmental organization. He says, we've been working with a particular NGO in the township and they do two things. They run a number of these creches, which are basically daycare centers for children who this is the VOA Special English Technology Report. Amazon.com recently launched its Kindle library lending service in the United States. Millions of users of the Kindle reader and app can now borrow Kindle books from their local public library. The company is working with Overdrive, a leading supplier of e-books and other digital content to libraries. The service will be available through the website of more than 11,000 local libraries across the country. Users of other devices including the Barnes & Noble Nook and Sony Reader, have already been able to borrow library books. Experts say Amazon's entry is likely to reopen a debate between publishers and libraries over...